Hello, my name is Joey Schillinger and I will be presenting to you all on the privacy invasion. Next slide. So, when going into this, I decided to bring up a quote from well-known American author C.S. Lewis who says, quote, uh, We live, in fact, in a world starved for solitude, silence, and pri privacy. Therefore, start, start for meditation and true friendship. So C.S. Lewis explains the importance of privacy in our world and how it is a sacred principle which we all deserve. I was... Uh, I was inspired by the extrasensory perception on how technology and sensors can be involved in our lives and actually change the way we see the world. And so I thought that would go well into privacy and how certain types of technology can invade our privacy. Next slide. So first I'd like to start out with some definitions. First, privacy uh, is the state or condition of being free from being observed or disturbed by other people. And the invasion of privacy is any time in which uh, this privacy is being in, uh, infringed on. And invasion is almost exclusively, invasion of privacy almost exclusively happens with the use of technology. Robert Scigliano, an American security analyst and expert of security, writes about the most common ways that privacy can be invaded and quote, the top ways that your privacy can be invaded are email, drone, public Wi-Fi, and hacking. And these all have to do with technology. Next slide. So with, uh, we see more invasions of privacy over the year because of the increases of technology and its use in our lives. The more, uh, the more people online and more people using technology, that's the more people that are put at risk for privacy invasion. First, there are many ways that the increases of technology can be seen and how it's been happening. Firstly, with Moore's Law, is an observation that states, quote, the capabilities of computer storage and ability will, de will double every couple years. So every couple years we're seeing uh, computers grow faster and stronger and and that in these graphs, we can see the use of uh, technology being used in our life. And then secondly, the Pew Research uh, Centers, which is a center dedicated to te technological research, says that, quote, 98% of all adults aged 18 to 29 have some sort of smartphone. So that is a huge number of people, almost 100%, that are actually online and being exposed to this and could potentially have privacy invasions. Also, Cisco, uh, which is a network hardware company, estimates that roughly 17 billion devices worldwide are connected to the internet. So that, again, is a huge amount of people that are uh, exposed to technology, and we need to put forward solutions to keep the invasion of privacy down and not uh, in our faces, and not so it does not cause problems. Uh, next slide. So some ways that uh, our technology can invade our privacy is firstly with drones. Drones are a new technology and they're being used to take pictures or videos, uh, mostly a lot with uh, some people not with their consent. So as CNN states, quote, there was the initial, uh, from Carly Hyatt says, quote, there was the initial shock and then as the days passed, I grew concerned that it might be a neighbor and this made me question how private my backyard is really. And then so this, they're reporting on a victim of, uh, of someone who is spied on by a drone, and it, it leaves the victims emotionally distraught. Additionally, uh, terms and conditions can be used to invade our privacy when we are agreeing to things we don't exactly read in the terms and conditions. From The Guardian, a well-known news network says, quote, hundreds of college students had joined to become members of Name Drop, a new social network. But according to paragraph 2.3.1 of the Terms and Service, they agreed to give away their future firstborn child, and only a quarter of them had uh, even bothered to look at the fine print. So this is uh, shows where we can be agreeing to things we don't exa exactly want to agree to, just because we're not, uh, just because we're not reading it completely, and we can put forward solutions to this. Additionally, fraud has become a big problem in recent years, and. It is definitely an invasion of privacy that deals with financially, also with emotionally. Forbes, a well-known news network, says, quote, I can't even tell you what it felt like, like someone had taken over my life. Additionally, CBS uh, states that, quote, fraudsters hit a record of 15.4 million Americans, up 16% from 2015. So the, uh, the act of fraud it has been going up in recent years, and like my Forbes quote said, that it le also leaves the the victims emotionally distraught and financially distraught. So again, going on to surveillance, my last one that I have up here is uh, an article from uh, the Pew Research Center from Lee Rain and Shi Mantif. Uh, 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 quote, after the 2015 Santa Bernardino shootings, the following government surveillance increase, 47% of the survey expressed that they strongly disliked 
the new security increases. So this shows that like is not popular with the people and everybody loves their privacy and does not want it to be taken away. Since these are growing problems and we see more people exposed to the internet, I think it's time that we put forward solutions to keep these problems down. Next slide. My solution one is to teach safety measures and it's about to how to stay safe on the internet and we can give it to schools and uh, to teach them what to do and what not to do on the internet. In a Forbes article, uh, studies say, quote, Although older adults are in need of serious computer systems, half of the younger generation still lack comprehensive online safety. So we can see that this is needed among all sides of the spectrum and how old and young people all need, uh, all need sorts of uh, teachings to keep them safe on the internet. Additionally, Scholastic has started to enforce that all K-12 students should have uh, some sort of internet safety throughout their schooling career. So that they need, they say it's mandatory and they're starting to enforce this. Uh, next slide. So some limitations and implications of this are, it's hard to enforce at all schools and get everybody to cooperate and no amount of teaching can solve silly mistakes that the individual people make. And then some implications are that people who will be taught will less likely have, to have issues with privacy invasion and will likely lower, lower the rates of uh, privacy invasion among these people. All right, uh, next slide is, I put forward another solution, uh, which is laws and regulations. This is aimed to keep uh, things like terms and conditions and people who are actually doing uh, this invasion of privacy to disincentivize them from their actions and keep them from, uh, and from with punishment and keep them from not doing it. So, uh, so uh, ABC News reports on the Facebook privacy scandal saying, quote, 87 million viewers had their data shared with Cambridge Analytica and that it was lost. And then Facebook says 70, 70 million of the victims are in the United States. So we can prevent instances like this where 70 million people in the United States had their privacy invaded on and what their information was given to other people. So we can stop things like this from happening with uh, good laws and regulations. So next slide with the limitations and implications of the solution. The limitations are people will still attempt invasion and this will still be prevalent, although uh, and regardless of punishment, so they will still attempt this. And it does not fix self-caused privacy invasion that we do unto ourselves. And some implications of this is that it will stop some people from going and uh, invading privacy, and it will stop, uh, and the number of invasions will likely go down. And then onto my conclusion where I found that in my research that both solutions were equally viable. And in order to have a better world, I w it would be much better to have both of these solutions. The teaching is better to teach younger people and and older people to to prevent accidents from going on to themselves. Where terms where the rules and regulations are better to prevent accidents done by large corporations or privacy invaders. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. Uh, the first question is: How did you handle different perspectives in order to reach your conclusion? How do you think the perspectives influence that conclusion? Okay, so I thought like. Obviously, when people have their privacy invaded, I have quotes like of them being ethically distraught. Like that's an ethical matter where they themselves were hurt, like morally. And so, and then also many of these instances like affect people financially. Like I brought up fraud, so that I thought would go into the economic perspective that I wrote in my paper, where many people have their uh, identity stolen and it's used to buy things, which uh, really harms them economically as well as them socially. I use those two mainly. Perfect. And then the follow-up question is, how did you use the conclusions or research questions of others, like, like people that you used as your authors, to advance your own research? How is, was it aligned or misaligned with the stuff you learned? So the, a lot of the evidence I used was like uh, somewhere specific examples of people who, like I said, had economic pro problems or social problems and were like victims of this. Then I also had other data that shows that this is that to uh, support that this is on the rise to just bring up that we need solutions. But the evidence that I used in my solutions were examples where it's already happening now, and like other quotes that showed like I used a lot of news corporations that like report on things going on now and like uh, things that people experience. So I thought that uh, that really helped uh, my argument, saying that it's already happening now and it's well needed. Like. And yeah, just examples of stuff happening in today's world. So I thought that backed it up pretty well. Perfect. Thank you.